G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As you may have seen a couple weeks ago, we had Joycey back on the show and he gave us his 2019 AFL predicted ladder. Like most of you, I'm sure, I'm getting pretty excited about the start of round one, so I've come back to give you my own 2019 ladder predictions. I did do a video a few months ago using the AFL ladder predictor, but I thought I'd give you a new fresh prediction, not using the ladder predictor, and just trying to rank the teams as how I see it. So like Joycey did, I'm gonna go through the teams one by one from 18 to first. In 18th spot, surprise, surprise, I've picked the Gold Coast Suns. As everyone knows, they lost Hall, Lynch, and May over the off season. They were already an absolute garbage team to begin with, so it's hard to imagine them getting any kind of improvement on last year. To add to their good fortune, Rory Thompson's just done his ACL and is out for the year. They also lost Jared Lyons, who was probably an underrated part of their midfield. They replaced him with Anthony Miles and a few other bit players, but I just don't see it being enough to generate improvement. But long story short, I think they're only gonna get worse this season. In 17th spot, I've got Carlton. Like I said in my video about Carlton, I feel like they're starting to get all the pieces together that they need going forward for the next Premiership tilt. But for the time being, they're just too inexperienced. They just haven't got the ready-made talent ready to go. They've added a few forward line options like McGovern and for Solo, and down back they've added Nick Newman. But overall, I just can't see it being enough to drive real improvement. In 16th spot, I've got the Western Bulldogs. Like I said in my video, I really, really rate the talent they've got going there. And I actually think their midfield could be in the top half of the competition. That being said, they've gone really draft heavy with their list management strategy, so it makes me think they're only gonna pump more games into their youngsters. If you told me they were gonna play finals this year, I actually wouldn't find it that incredible, but in terms of ready-made talent, they're pretty top heavy, and I feel like one injury to one of their key players could send the whole thing unraveling. In 15th spot, I've picked St Kilda. I don't really like this prediction. I've kind of only picked them because I can't put anyone else in the bottom four. And to be honest, it's hard to justify them over other teams. I do think their list is a bit better than what they've actually achieved over the last couple of years, but other than Hanbury coming in to maybe consolidate their midfield, it's hard to see where the improvement's gonna come from this year. Look, it's a bit of a lame prediction, but I've got them as my last bottom 14. In 14th spot, we've got a team that I've been very hot and cold on, and that's Fremantle. I've talked them up because I think some of their mature players are very, very good, and if they're all fit, they could have a really good season. Fife is one of the very best midfielders in the competition. If he can put a full season together and he gets a bit of support from the other midfielders, Fremantle's midfield could actually be really competitive. I think some of their young guns like Brennan Cox, Adam Chero, and Andrew Brayshaw are really, really good players for their age. And I can see them actually being big contributors in just their second and third season. As we know, the Dockers gained a forward line through Hogan and Lobb, but they lost the really important Lockie Neal. Personally, I think they're gonna struggle for a little bit to adapt to new game style, and that's why I have them not jumping up the ladder as much as I previously suggested. In 13th spot, I've got Port Adelaide, and this was another tough one for me. I feel like they lost some pretty important outside run and polish with Polek and Wingard leaving the club. Neither of those players are absolute world beaters, but I think it kind of throws off the balance of their midfield. On the other hand, I can see Tom Rockliffe now that he's over his groin issues, having a really massive year. If you guys play AFL Fantasy, he's my biggest recommendation to get into your team. But nonetheless, I don't think it's gonna be enough to lift them much further than where they were last year. I do think they can be a top eight contender this year, but I could also see it unraveling. That's why I've got them 13th. In 12th spot, I've got the Sydney Swans. On the one hand, I kind of feel like the Swans are hanging by a thread because the end of the last year in the finals was absolutely pathetic. On the other hand, they haven't missed the finals since 2009 and every time someone writes them off, they come back. I don't know if things are a little bit stale at the club. It's kind of the vibe you got from West Coast last year. They haven't really lost anyone major in the off season, but they didn't really gain anyone either. For me, I have them sliding to 12th, and I'm sure they're gonna make me look very silly. In 11th spot, I've got another slider, and that's Hawthorne. It might seem like a knee-jerk reaction, but losing Tom Mitchell is gonna be absolutely huge for them. I just don't think their midfield depth bats that deep. I know they've recruited Wingard and Scully, and in isolation, those are two very good pickups, but I don't think Wingard's the sort of player to lift teams up the ladder. And while Scully's an excellent player, there's obviously doubts on his fitness. I think they're an exceptionally well-coached team and they're brilliant at unearthing talent. So I'm sure they'll unearth some really good young guns this year, but for mine, I don't think they're gonna play finals. In 10th spot, I've got the Brisbane Lions. This one makes me hesitate a bit because I feel like such a bandwagon at having the Lions rise up the ladder. On the one hand, they lost Dane Beams, but they gained Lockie Neal. So in that sense, they kind of cancel each other out. But this preseason, and I know it's only preseason, they've really impressed me, and I think they're playing with a lot of confidence. I think Jared Lyons might be an underrated acquisition because he's just that extra layer of support in the midfield. The talent of that club is obvious, and if they start playing with a bit of belief, they could go very close to playing finals. In ninth spot, and just missing out on finals, I've got Geelong. The top-end talent at that club is self-evident, with Kelly, Dangerfield, Ablett, Selwood, 
etc. But personally, I wonder if their list is still a little bit too top heavy. They have actively tried to develop some youth. They've unearthed Radagalia, Parfit, Jack Henry, but those guys are still developing, so I wouldn't be relying on them too heavily just yet. I think they really needed a pressure forward going into this season, and they've added Dalhouse, so he could be a massive coup. Equally, I honestly can see the Cats challenging for the four. I think they've been unfairly written off. But for the time being, I'm going to hedge my bets and go with ninth. In eighth spot and the first finals position, I've got North Melbourne. North Melbourne are another mid-level team that people are generally quite happy to write off for some reason. I feel like they've got a pretty solid nucleus and they're pretty well rounded from forward, middle and back. They probably lacked some outside run and polish last year, but they've added Polak and Aaron Hall, obviously, and then added Dom Tyson as well to consolidate that midfield depth. The back line's really strong, and they've obviously got one of the best forwards in the competition in Ben Brown. Perhaps you could say they're a little too one-dimensional going forward. Maybe they can stand to develop another goal-scoring option. Overall, however, I think they're starting to become quite an experienced battle-hardened side, and I think they're gonna start winning the close games that previously cost them finals. In seventh spot, I've got Essendon. Now these guys might be everyone's favorite to bolt into the top four. Personally, I don't really love tipping unproven teams to make it into premiership contention straight away. Obviously on paper, they are one of the most talented lists. I absolutely do concede that. But maybe they're still a little bit inexperienced and the lack of finals experience. They don't awesome. strike me as a really mentally strong team and that's probably what it's gonna require for them to compete with the top four. I think their time will come and this year they're probably a good chance to at least win a final, but I'm holding off on the calls for them being a premiership chance. In sixth spot, I've got the Giants. Now they're a team that's quite easy to write off because they've had extensive outs. But when you think about who's still in their midfield, they're a very strong lineup. You've got Kelly, Canelio, Ward, Whitfield, Toby Green, Taranto, Deledio. Taranto in particular, I could really see stepping up and being an absolute gun of the competition within a few years. They've also got important defender Zach Williams back this year. I just think they're too good to write off as a finals contender. In fifth spot, I've got Melbourne. Most people are pretty happy to extrapolate Melbourne's form last year and assume they're probably gonna win the premiership this year. I understand why people are saying that, but personally, I never really expect a team to improve in a linear progression, particularly when so many of their elite players are so young. Don't get me wrong, I see why there's hype. There is some seriously good talent at that club. And to be honest, I think they could win the premiership from fifth. But equally, I don't know if they have the mental resolve yet to put it together for 22 rounds of a season. That's why I've got them in fifth, but I can definitely see them winning the premiership from there. In fourth spot, I've got the Crows and they're my biggest bolter. I think there's been quite a few cases where a team has had a really bad grand final performance and then after a couple of years have come back. And I think the case could be the same with Adelaide. I know they've had a lot of outs, but they've never really had any problem replacing those outs. Their culture and the development structures seem to be so strong that they can just churn out the talent. Are they a genuine premiership contender? Not until they start beating Melbourne teams at the MCG, but I can see them winning enough home games and developing the Adelaide Oval into a fortress that they can slip into fourth. In third spot, we've got the reigning premiers, the West Coast Eagles. Now, I can easily see the Eagles being top two again, but because I'm an Eagles fan, I feel inclined to underrate them a bit so I don't get as much hate in the comments. I'm still gonna get hate in the comments. There seems to be quite a strong mental resolve around the Eagles this off season, and it is only the off season, but they're looking in pretty good nick. And a lot of their elite players are still quite young other than maybe Kennedy and Hearn. For me, I think the biggest two challenges facing the Eagles will be the mental side of it. Can they go the whole season and compete for another flag? We saw Richmond struggle with it last year. And secondly, they've got a few more tough away MCG fixtures this year, which might see them slip out of the top to, but nonetheless, very much still a premiership contender. In second spot, I've got Richmond. Now, as we all remember, Richmond were the premiership fancy for most of last year, but kind of went down in flames in the prelim, and you'd have to say a lot of that could be attributed to their mentality. Probably just weren't quite motivated to get over the second last hurdle. They're probably looking at the following week already. I think they're going to have a renewed motivation to go all the way this year, and that's why I see them finishing second. And that's before you even consider they've added Tom Lynch. In top spot, winning the minor premiership, I've gone with the Magpies. To be honest, the top spot could go to any one of those top three that I've mentioned, but I've picked the Pies just because they've probably added their list most on paper, in my opinion. On the other hand, sometimes losing a grand final, like I said before, can have a destabilizing effect on a club. So I could see them sliding to fifth or sixth, but on paper, they are as good as anyone in the competition. Their midfield just bats so deep, in addition to their elite ruck. And I feel like Jordan Dugowie is probably on the cusp of becoming an absolute gun of the competition. He's already considered quite a gun, but I feel like he could go to an almost dusty level. So that's my predicted ladder, and I probably will go with the predicted grand final of Collingwood and Richmond. And I'd have to probably tip Richmond in that instance. Like I said, they're just a really professional outfit, and I think the pain of losing last year could really galvanize them. Hope it doesn't happen, but 
It's probably my loose prediction at this moment. To finish off, I'll fire off a few other predictions. I'm gonna go with Nat Five to win the Brownlow medal. Um, and if he gets suspended, I'll go with Josh Kelly or Stephen Canelio as a bolter. Coleman medal's tough. I can't really imagine any forwards in the top few teams will kick enough goals. Obviously there's Lynch at Richmond, but he's got Jack Rewalt to compete with. Is Josh Kennedy gonna play enough games to win the Coleman? I'm gonna say Ben Brown. For rising star, I feel like it's very early, but it's a two horse race for me between Zach Butters and Sam Walsh. I'm gonna go with Zach Butters. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. As always, feel free in the comments to write about how much you can hate my predictions. They are just meant to be fun. I don't expect it to be accurate, so try not to get too salty about what I've said in this video. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the Discord link in the description. We've got a really fun community going on at the moment and it's just growing by the day, so make sure you get around it. Also, if you play AFL Fantasy, make sure you pick up the invite code that I've left in the description and feel free to join the True Footy League. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. We're gonna make ideally some weekly content throughout the AFL season. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.